Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Austrian Bundesliga uh, weekend. There ha I have been so many things happening there. I maybe have a round with 26 goals in six games. So that's uh, an amazingly great. I mean, over four goals per game. Uh, we had, of course, the post-mortem of all the European disaster in the Austrian Bundesliga, which is a big uh, topic. Uh, we had a record transfer happening and of course, and that goes together with the European disaster, uh, the, all the uh, trouble br uh, brewing at Rapid Vienna, which I think is probably the biggest story. Uh, all the media is full with it and again shows you that Rapid is by far the biggest club in Austria. Um, and yeah, that's why some people love it, some people hate it and uh, we definitely cannot talk about that one as well um so i will leave actually the talk of the overall action on the field for the second part of the, of the video when we run through the results but needless to say uh it is it was a really a fun round overall it was the first time that i'm actually watching uh first time in a long time i was actually watching the sunday afternoon where they switched between two in the games and i was uh, thoroughly happy of course I'm wearing Lusk and I always wear an Austrian video as a Lusk shirt. Uh, I was, I'm was i still very happy that they are top of the of, of, of the table. The performance, I think, was really good, although there were some stretches where it was not so much. But I talked a little bit about that in the two shorts that I have published as well. But I think the first topic I want to get is, is Quo Vadis Bundesliga, because... Um, Austrian fans have been a little bit spoiled with European performances uh, coming and especially what Salzburg was doing but also what Lask were doing. However, Lask is not in the bond isn't is not in Europe this season. Uh, totally their own uh, fault. So I'm not saying that they were cheated out of it. Um, but you know, those are the two teams that have been making the most points. Now, Salzburg has not been playing so far because they were already seeded in the group stage. Um, but the other teams it's for the first time in a long time that um, no one has successfully qualified for the competition that they actually started in. Yes, there are three teams in a group stage. Last season were four, which is kind of the high vault, the mark. I would have fully expected to be there to be four teams. But the showings were not so great. I mean, I take out Sturm Graz now because I think Dynamo Kiev is probably just a tad touch too far. And qualifying uh, for the Champions League through the league route is no easy feat. And we saw that Dynamo Kiev was completely outclassed by a uh, furious Benfica. And I think Sturm Graz would have looked equally bad. So um, I want to take them out. I think they have a rather tough draw for the uh, Europa League group stage, but maybe they can get a point or two here and there. Um, I don't know what Salzburg will do. Uh, part of me doesn't want them to do much because they're in a group with my other favorite team, Milan. But, you know, I, th I think Salzburg at least will probably s should survive until the next round. Uh, but it's all the other teams that I'm really worried about. Wolfsburg, let's start with them. Uh, because they were my uh, lower, lowest bet. They have been actually doing their part in Europe as well. And they're the smallest club by far. Um, but they have been slow starters last season. They are very slow starters this season. And yeah, their showing were not good. I mean, against Gzira from uh, Malta, only a draw at home. Then you get a totally undeserved win at Molde. And then I really like it when the president said that they are a superior, a far superior team. Yes. I think Molde is a better team than Wolfsburg. I'm not gonna discount that. But they, if Wolfsburg is playing to their potential, they should be well within reach. That is where I'm a little bit... You cannot lose 4-0 at all. And, uh, but then we have to come to the Viennese teams. After when I didn't expect much either, especially Europa League qualifying and against a team like Fen Fenerbahce. I know Turkish uh, soccer is a little bit on a downward spin, but when you look at the squad that Fenerbahce have... And then you look at the almost no-name squad that Austria Vienna have. Yes, they have a few. They got a few players that were successful in Europe with Lusk, but the main core is a very, very young team. They were always outmatched, and I really hope that they can do something in the Conference League. Although also, 
rather rather tough draw i actually think it will be definitely a down year for austria which means they probably will lose their top eight spot which was anyway on very very thin ice but the brunt of the criticism has to come to rapid who were in all three rounds in the first round i would say a little bit lucky uh the way you uh, won against Lecha Gdansk was just because you scored two goals away from home in very quick succession and you just hang on in uh, against Nefci Baku honestly that's an opponent that you should roll over with uh, with a huge budget as you have and as in Austria there's no other team except Salzburg that has as much money to available to themselves than Rapid but uh, I was not looking good. But in the end, I think on the second leg, on balance deserved. But it's this complete non-showing against Vaduz. And I said in the Europa League um, uh, review, we did this already, against the ninth place team in the second Swiss League. And yes, Austria at the moment is probably ahead of Switzerland in the, in the rankings. But I always think that the Swiss and the Austrian leagues are very competitive. Edible. You cannot lose on two legs, and you were lucky in Vaduz, but you could not show anything, and then you lose at home to Vaduz, and it was deserved. And it showed a larger plan, and we'll talk about it when I talk about a larger thing that uh, it was uh, there was no plan, and that's the big problem with Rapid. But we'll talk about that second part. Uh, I want to talk something a bit more positive as also Euro, 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 European I mean positive I, I, I don't know Sturm Graz sold their striker Rasmus Hoyland a Danish striker 19 euros to Atalanta for 17 million euros that's basically their budget for a season giving you a uh, kind of the um, uh, the dimensions of, of Austrian uh, soccer um, you know Rapid Vienna is said 45 million is the second highest I think Sturm Graz probably has the third highest but it's around 20, uh, around 20 million so uh, selling the, the striker which definitely hurts them because he was uh, really on fire uh, but that actually shows also that in the Austrian league there's not only Salzburg there are other teams that have loads of talent on there that can be discovered even Lask has been selling some uh, players for like 2 million to uh, um, to Belgium and so on so uh, you know it does happen that uh, money can be made of players it's, it's very much a development league and it's a serious it's a way more seriously serious league than it used to be that also has has to be said. So um, I think for Sturm this is very positive um, a, on the economic side. Sporting wise, yes, they probably will get now a replacement striker, but you never know how those work out. But uh, scouting department in Austria are working well. To, and uh, the last thing uh, is of course that this was the highest transfer out of Austria from a team other than Salzburg, and uh, very very much on top there as well. But the big one is, of course, what's happening at Rapid. I mean, um, after this exit in Europe, uh, and unrest has already been brewing for quite, 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 quite a while, the fans demanded. I mean, you could, could see that they're, they're going out of the stadium, they're taking down the advertising boards or already some angrily. Um, and then they were moving towards the VIP lounges uh, and demanding that uh, the whole uh, top press just resign and out with them and here's my fully unwarranted and very outside take on uh, rapid for me rapid as i said most supported team in austria and they position themselves as the antithesis to red bull salzburg meaning Red Bull Salzburg is the modern football the corporate football rapid is the you know all tradition the myths the history all behind However, you get the feeling that behind all this, that Rapid is becoming more of a museum team than a proper sports club. Because with a budget of 45 million, yes, you will not challenge every year for the title. But it's a teeny bit like Dortmund in Germany. They should challenge way more. And I actually would say that uh, Dortmund is doing much, much better in comparison as Rapid is doing against um, Salzburg. 
They finished a few times second, but it was at a far distance. They never, in the last few seasons, had even a chance or a, a, got within a smidgen of Salzburg. And it's all down, because what do Rapid fans want to see? I mean, Rapid is a very much a working class club. They want to see the team fighting, put in a good performance, uh, work hard, sweat the jersey. That's what's demanded. That's the Rapid spirit, in, 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 in a way, epitomized by the so-called Rapid quarter hour. Uh, there's the last 15 minutes where uh, the fans are all clapping uh, to, to uh, signify to the team, now is the time to dig in your heels and you turn the game around as we have done the one time they won the German Championship. I think it was in 42 or so, 41 or something, some day, when they turned on around 0-3 against Schalke in a 4-3 victory. So basically this is, uh, and this was kind of unsavory times, I understand uh, that, 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 that part, but that's kind of the repeat spirit. But behind all that, add that the repeat fan culture, especially the ultras, I would argue are the most powerful ultras in the entire German speaking world because they have the power to overturn and deter, uh, overturn uh, the top brass and have been very much pandered to by the leadership of the club for a long time. And therefore, you can see them both on, on two ways. I mean, it's great that the fans have a say. However, it also it's, comes always back to the spirit of Rapid. And it clouds that the club has no plan on the field. Now, as a Lusk fan, I am very happy because what Lusk is to uh, Rapid is Rapid to Salzburg. You know, the old, those, those are the relationships roughly. Although I think Lusk will probably, probably, probably soon with the new stadium uh, enter the next level. But uh, just um, for the rest of the league, it's very happy. But it is uh, just so, uh, even for me as a decided non-Rapid like, uh, it is really this hard, hard to see with all the resources the club has, how little they do with that. And that is a real, 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 real shame. And now, even now, at the post-mortem of this um, uh, loss to Vaduz, I mean, they already cancelled the uh, support. Who stepped down? The president, who, um, okay, he, he, well, he tried to unify the Rapid family. He had to step down, um, or he's, he, he decided to not run for re-election where he would have run unopposed. So that's the first one. The second one is the uh, you know the leader of the economic the, the, the department, you know, all for the fi the finances. Those two step down because they have been uh, seen a lot of uh, abuse hurled towards them, which I decide we don't really need now. I'm actually not sure if those aren't the wrong people. Yes, if you want to have a change, maybe now, um, but. It gets a little bit overlooked that Rapid built under this leadership a new training center. You know, the facilities are for Austria and probably even for most of Europe really world class there. I mean, let's say European class there, and I don't know, so, but really good facilities. They have built this up. They are the ones who put the sponsors in, but of course, most sponsors are now um, threatened away because of all the influence that the ultras can have and they don't want to be associated with. Um, very unpopular lead, lead leadership. But for me, the leadership where it really is lacking is on the sporting field because there is no identity. There is no identity of how Rapid wants to play. Salzburg has a clear identity. Lusk, for a good while, had a clear identity. They're trying to, re to, re to rebuild it now. Sturm Graz have now a clear identity. Rapid has no identity whatsoever. The, this is a team that wants to become champions, but as soon as you give that team the ball, they have no idea what to do with it. And this is to me the big trouble. And I think uh, with all the leadership, and now I see the former Rapid captain and uh, kind of, uh, he's almost uh, adored like a deity uh, with Hoffman. He is now running for president and I'm thinking the problems are not getting less. Again, this is my take on it. I have no insight and on the other side, I am personally not unhappy about that situation where it really, where I really don't know where, where I should laugh or cry is for the Austrian League, for the UEFA coefficient. Because 
On one side, there was plenty of schadenfreude for me to add uh, rapid loss to Vaduz. On the other side, I know it's really, really, really bad for the league. And this is where it hurts. You don't know whether you should laugh or cry. Okay, enough of that sorry show. And let's uh, talk about the games here, the results from the last round. Lustenau's run up top got to a very, very brutal stop. Salzburg finally kicking into, into a 6 0 away at uh, away from home. Yes, Lustenau is a promoted team, but they have been really, really good. Hartberg getting a deserved lead uh, win over Reed, um, you know, with two late, late goals, and then there was a red card in, 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 in between the goals as well. Um, I said already in a short last performance, especially in the first, first half, I think they completely dominated uh, Altach. Uh, the stats were rather deceiving with even shots and goal, but the quality of the chances created by Lusk were really, really good because those two shots came within a short succession. But other, 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 other than that, it was all dominated, uh, dom, 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 domination. It was only 1 0. Beautifully played goal uh, by Robert Schul, who gets his first one, so he's off uh, to, to, to go start. However, Come the second half, Coach Klose, yes, that's Miroslav Klose, um, kind of made some good adjustments and Altak actually were then threatening and had a few goal good chances and then got a freak goal to make it 1-1, which at that point was actually not undeserved, I gotta say. I was a little bit worried at that point. Um, and I also have to say that that last game was happening at the same time as Milan were playing and you were Roma were, were playing, so I was kind of but I was a little, little, little bit worried and, and and annoyed, but I knew that there will probably be some uh, where a blip coming. Uh, within a few minutes, Jovicic fires a shot in. I mean, it was off a corner and he just yanks it in. Beautiful goal. And setting up uh, the win for Lask at that moment, uh, there was no coming back for Al Alter, and it got a proper scoreline with Horvath uh, getting also off op opening his tab on the goal sheet. Uh, it's a really beautiful pad by Michal, who kind of gained, you know, it was a bad kick out and then uh, a beautiful, beautiful play. And then uh, I was very happy to see Eftimius Kuluris, a Greek striker. Uh, who was actually hired as the main goal 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 scorer, but he has been just having a little bit of sub sub supplemental role. He scored. He finally scored his goal, and you could see that literally everyone was super happy for him. That the coach Kuba gave him a real real bear hug. So I was really happy to see that uh, maybe uh, you know I don't say that Ljubicic at at, at the moment is running cold, but he has not scored uh, since his four goals uh, against uh, Wolfsburg. Uh, but he, I think the attack is working rather well and the attention has shifted to Nakamura. But maybe Koluris can add another spice there. Maybe he will become... So I was really, really happy to see that. And spirits are high. Uh, as for Klagenfurt against Austria Vienna, 3-3. Yes, it was an exciting game, but it was a, such a freak result for Austria Vienna. Because Klagenfurt was the better team. However, the first two goals, I mean, they took a very early lead through uh, pink. They also, again, took the lead just within 46 seconds of uh, kick of the second half. But both goals by Austria went, went against the run of play, but were beautifully played. I mean, the pass by Fitz to Braunöder uh, to make it just before the half. A 1-1 was a, a, a wonderful. And then Ramftl, yeah, former last player Ramftl, it still hurts to see when in Austria shirt. Uh, also Wallace in a beautiful, beautiful goal. Then Austria Vienna take him, him the lead. And if you're a Klagenfurt fan, you really thought this can kind of be, they get a late penalty and Andy Irving can equalize. So it's a 3-3. Three, three. Um, Rapid, we talk a lot about uh, Rapid against Sturm. Um, with all, all the travel, Rapid actually was, I think, in the first half, the better uh, team and actually tried to make up for their... Um, for for their failings but a freak goal gave Sturm an equalizer which was probably not deserved at that at the point was from, from a corner, corner kick Sakaria takes uh takes it uh one times it and and hits Wittrich and it goes in into net however in the second half it became more and more stale still mid and then uh rapid kind of lost the grip on the game they got a red card and then they get a tough panel penalty and so Sturm wins it and deepens the crisis for Rapid at this very very very, very more Rapid is very much a club in crisis and last but not least Tirol losing for the first time at home to Wolfsburg 1-3 despite taking a very early lead but Wolfsburg also atoning a little bit for their failure in Europe 
Um, I think Wolfsburg is a much better team than uh, they currently stand. Uh, however, you know they're pro. They're, they're also in a rebuilding mode. Uh, with all these, we have the standings. Lask and Salzburg are now clear away of on the top. With Sturm run lagging behind. I think it's those three teams at the moment at the class of the league. Rapid after a decent start to the season has now only seven. Uh, it sits still at seven, two losses in a row, and a game left which is the other thing I mean they postponed the game against Hartberg to prepare better for for, for the dudes uh, they didn't do any anything Austria Vienna is in the pulse is, is in pulse with the three points more they actually would be ahead of Rapid at the moment on the bottom it's Reed and Alltag uh, now you can actually see on the bars also Lask is definitely the best the most surprising team at this moment but there are only four teams that are, have a really positive uh, performance so far uh, expected standings regular, regular season yeah the top six didn't change there's a lot of change down there I think Wolfsburg probably has a chance I'm not sure if Lustenau will uh, maintain the good start uh, but if they would they would clearly finish sixth and then Wolfsburg would go in the playoffs um, I'm actually happy that Lask at the moment is on schedule to uh, finish second in the league but you know again it's a long league and with all the good start, Lask having the best start in their history to any, any season. But I all, all, always say, for Lask, it's always, we had good falls many times and it all fell apart in the spring. A coach needs to show me what they have in the spring and that's that. Um, we have actually a cup round coming up in the midweek and here of all the Bundesliga teams, uh, except for Lustenau, uh, Lusten and Hartberg, all the, the uh, games of all the Bundesliga league, league teams. Um, I think nominally Sturm Graz against Austria Salzburg sounds really enticing. However, that's the other team from Salzburg that, you know, was founded after Red Bull, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it gives probably Rapid Wien a little bit of a chance of uh, making up thing, uh, you know, getting maybe on the winning side again, but let's see. Schwarzes Bregen is in Austria Klagenklang for it's kind of a traditional duel uh, from a long time ago. Um, and then the next round is, I said in the last uh, week's video, is, is very much a derby round. We have the Austria Derby between Austria, Vienna and Lucena. We have the West Derby between Salzburg and Tirol. We have a Styrian Derby between Sturm and Hartberg. Uh, then we have a Corinthian Derby between Wolfsburg and Austria Klagenfurt. And then we have the Upper Austrian Derby between Lask and the Reed, which of course is the pick of the bunch, at least for me, because local pride is at stake. Long video, absolutely long video, but I, I, I thought I use this video now, you know, uh, every other week you get an Austrian Bundesliga video only to really talk about what's happening. And it was a, uh, very well timed in that sense, because there is at the moment a lot of happening in the Austrian Bundesliga uh, and as I said it's a league that is maybe a little bit overlooked but I think it's a very interesting league at uh, at this very moment in time any case hope you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up if you did so um, leave a comment below if you want to add anything or if you have other questions on, on the league I'm happy to answer them uh, and yeah subscribe to the channel if you want to see more I will talk to you soon bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!